Today in this module, we will start with a new topic, time series analysis. We will see why time series analysis is taken to be a separate discipline and why and how is it different from cross sectional analysis and panel or longitudinal analysis. We will look at time series from a data point of view, we will look at several examples of time series data and see how they are different from other types of data. Now, time series analysis is broadly divided into two classes. It is either a study in the time domain or a study in the frequency domain. In this lectures, we will be primarily concerned with the time domain approach and what we will do is, we will try and distinguish between the time domain and the frequency domain approach in this lecture. Let us begin by looking at what is a time series. A time series is a series of observation which is measured over time. So, suppose we have n number of points at which the observations are taken and we will denote by either x t or y t the observation at the tth time point. t would be anything from 1 to n. Observations are generally taken at equidistant time points and unequal distances are generally difficult, but not impossible to handle. But in this lecture, we would be concentrating only on equidistant time points. Examples would be the price of a stock that changes every day, the air temperature measured every month, the heart rate of a patient taken minute by minute, then death from bronchitis, emphysema and asthma in EK. This is a data that is provided by Diggle in his book in 1990 published. Several other examples would be the annual number of lynx pelts in Hudson Bay, Canada between 1857 to 1911, the monthly measures of CO2 above Mauna Loa in Hawaii between 1965 to 1980. And this is a famous data, the sunspot numbers. These are observed by various laboratories. One of them is the Royal Observatory of Belgium. And so, you have this sunspot numbers as a time series data. So, as you can see, the time series data can actually be monthly, it can be quarterly, it can be hourly, it can be minute by minute. So, you need to define what your time points are and then you can have a series where you have equidistant time points where you observe the phenomena that you are looking at. This is a data for bronchitis death and what we have here is January 5 to December of 10 data. Okay. So, we have 6 years data, data is monthly in this case. So we can as I said have monthly data and this would be the structure and we will see what why we will be interested to look at this time series data. If you plot the data, we see that the data would be having a structure like this and this is another data, this is the level of water in the Lake Huron and this level over time is changing. So, you can see that the level has gone down and then it has climbed up a little bit and then it has remained constant over time. So, this gives us a good idea as to what the level of the lake is going to be like in subsequent years. So, this is one reason why we would like to look at time series data. Now, let us distinguish time series analysis from other types of analysis. So, let us look at the types of studies we can have and why are they different. We will do this through an example. Let us look at the heights of 50 newborn girls and observe them every year till they are 20 years of age. So, we start from 0 years last LBD that is the last birthday and then move on to 20 years and then generally the height does not increase anymore and therefore, we stop. If the whole data is studied that 50 girls over 20 years 
and if you have data for this, we have what is referred to as panel or longitudinal analysis. In economics, they call it panel analysis. Generally, in biostatistical studies, they call it longitudinal analysis. But they are similar, although the techniques at times can be slightly different. Instead, if we are looking at the heights of the girls at a given age, say what is the height of 10 year girl? So, what we have is a cross sectional analysis. So, this is for a particular age and the 50 girls over this age. If the height of a single girl is observed over 20 years, then we have what is referred to as a time series analysis. Now, let us look at this in a slightly more detail. So, we have a probability space omega s t and let t be an index. We define a real valid function x on this omega cross t, where the small omega belongs to capital omega and t belongs to capital T. So, x is a function of small t and omega, which takes values in capital omega and t. For a fixed t, say we have t equal to t naught, then this is only a function, x is only a function of omega and we call it a random variable, which is defined on the probability space omega s t. Thus, for t belonging to capital T, we have a collection of random variables. So, when we change t, we have a set of collection or set of random variables. On the other hand, if we fix omega, then x t is a real valid function of t only and we call it a realization of a time series. The collection of all realizations, that is we have this for different omega. So, if we keep on changing omega, we have a realization for each omega and the collection of all this is referred to as a ensemble. A time series is a single realization from an ensemble of realization. This is a very important aspect and we will have to come back to this time and again to understand why time series is different from other studies. So, remember that a time series is only a single of the realization that we could have got or that we actually get from a large group of realizations which you do not observe. So, let us look at cross sectional versus time series analysis. In a cross sectional study, we have n observations from a single population. As before, if you go back to the example, we see that we are looking at 10 year olds and we have 50 observations from the height distribution of 10 year olds. Now, 10 year old girls would have a height distribution with say a mean of say around 4 feet 5 inches of 4 feet 6 inches and some variability and what we have here is a set of 50 observations taken from this height distribution, which we can very often assume to be normal. On the other hand, when you do a time series study, we have one observation each from a population. Mind you, we are looking at a single girl over 20 years. So, the first observation at 0 years comes from the height distribution of 0 year old girls. The second observation comes from the height distribution of 1 year old girls. Similarly, the 15th observation comes from the height distribution of 15 year old girl. So, there is a, this is a single observation coming from n different population. So, it is 20 observations from 20 different height distributions that we have in our example. So, you can see that the two types of data are different. What is special about a time series? The observations in a time series are generally related. As we can see that the height distribution of the girls, for a given height, the different girls would have independent heights. So, this would not be related, but if you look at a single girl, his height this year would relate to his height in the previous year. So, it will be sequentially related. This relationship therefore, has a particular structure that means there is a pattern in the relationship 
and this is this pattern is what we will try and study in time series analysis. We say that the time series is continuous if the time set or the index set t is continuous and if the set is takes discrete values t, t takes discrete values in the set we have a discrete time series. Mostly when we look at observations most time series are discrete by nature, but there are some studies where we have continuous time series. For example, if you are looking at a ECG of a patient then the ECG is plotted continuously over a given interval of time and therefore, it can be looked upon as a continuous time series, but in most cases we will observe the phenomena at discrete time points and hence even if the underlying time series is continuous observationally the series would be discrete. So, in, in this present study we will be primarily concerned with discrete time series. Now, there are two types of analysis that we generally have. The time series models can either be in the time domain or in the frequency domain. So, we can look at these two types as two segregated different ways of looking at the same thing and interestingly these two are interrelated. So, you can always move from one to the other and from the other to the first one. But let us distinguish the difference between the time domain approach and the frequency domain approach. In the analysis in the time domain x t is looked upon as a function of its own partial value. So, x t is either a function of x t minus 1, x t minus 2 and pre previous values of x or the present and past values of some iid random variable. So, in this case epsilon t is our iid random variable and x t is a function of epsilon t the current value of the random variable epsilon t minus 1, epsilon t minus 2 which are the past values of the random variable or very often a combination of these two that is x t is a function of both its own past values as well as the present and past values of some other iid random variable. In the frequency domain x t is assumed to be composed of a finite number of sinusoidal curves with different amplitudes and frequencies. So, we have very nice looking curves okay, regular curves sinusoidal ones and they have different amplitudes and different frequencies. What this does is so, we have this curve is c 1 a 1 theta 1 is one curve c 2 a 2 theta is another curve and x t is a function of this. So, what it really means that x t is merely a sum or a weighted sum of this curve. So, you have a time series you plot this and it looks very irregular and craggy, but what you can do is that you can take some very regular curves and of different amplitudes and frequencies superimpose them on one another and then you take a mixture of this and you land up with the very irregular curve that you have at least if not exactly very closely to it. So, we can see that x t can be written as a function of several curves. The problems in the time domain the problem is to identify the best set of variables and the best relationship which leads to the best representation of x. So, which are the how far back of the x t's that we need to go back to? or should we be looking at the other iid random variables epsilon t and if so how many of the epsilon t's from the past that we need to look at. So, we need to identify first that and then we need to find how we need can combine this to get a good representation of x t. So, it would be a linear combination of the x t values and the past x t values and the present and past iid random variable values which are the epsilon t's. In the frequency domain the problem is to identify the smooth curves which when combined together give rise to the to the original x t series. So, if we have a very large number of search curves we can probably 
give a good idea of what the original irregular series is like, but we would not go to that extent. We would like to look at 2, 3 or maybe 4, 5 curves, which when combined together gives a very good representation, if not an exact representation, a close representation of what the original series looks like. And we have to identify this 4, 5 curve, their frequencies and their amplitudes, so that we know what are the underlying curves that are giving rise to this particular time series. Why do you do a time series study? First of all, for smoothing purposes. As we saw in the previous examples, we have a very smooth curve and this is necessary to understand the inherent structure of the series. Most time series when you plot them would be craggy by nature. So, they would be having small fluctuations with time because there would be observational errors, there would be errors because of other extraneous factors. So, what we would like to do is to remove those extraneous factors and get a smooth curve. This is because time series are primarily used to forecast. So, based on the smooth series, we can predict what the future values are going to be like. So, if we have those crags etcetera, so in that case the future cannot be properly predicted because we have the errors in the original data. So, we will smooth out these errors, see what the underlying feature is and based on the smooth series, we can then predict in the future. So, if you are standing in 2015 and we have data from 2000 to 2014, then we will use that data to fit in a time series which would be a smooth series and then predict the values of 2015 or subsequently for 2016 or 2017. Of course, depending on what past data you have, you can forecast. If you have a large past data set, then probably you can make a longer forecast that means, you can go a longer steps ahead in forecasting, but it is always advisable that you do not forecast too far ahead when you do not have a long series behind you. That is because the smoothing may not be good enough and there may be changes that a short series may not have been able to capture. But smoothing and forecasting are two primary reasons for looking at time series. In today's lecture, we began with time series analysis and we saw several examples of time series data. Then we saw that time series is distinct from other types of studies like cross sectional studies or from panel data studies and we looked at the differences between these three types of studies. Now, time series analysis is broadly classified into two classes. One is the time domain approach and the other is the frequency domain approach. We also gave a brief introduction to either of these two approaches. In the subsequent classes, we will be looking at the time domain approach in general and we will give some references to the frequency domain approach as well.